This is the image I'll be using today, and it's from a model shoot that I did in San Francisco a little while ago. You can see there's a few colors to play with here. So the first thing I'm going to do is duplicate my layer. And that's just so I've always got the original in case I need it. Then to my adjustment layers, I'm going to choose black and white. Now this is the same as what happens when you go to convert to grayscale. But you can see everything still looks a bit flat and gray, ironically. Um, there's not much definition between the different tones in the image. So I'm going to try and fix that a little with the levels. So I'm just going to add some contrast, some highlights, and some more black. And just try and separate out those tones a little. So you can see I've still got areas where I'm either not showing enough tone or detail. So we'll go back. And we'll go back to the black and white tab. So here, there's the color, there's the grayscale. And now I've got these six colors here, and starting with the red one, you can see that all the reds have been lightened. So I've got complete control over that. And the yellows are going to help me with the skin tones. So I'll bring those up, just bring the red down a little. There's no green in this image, so we're going to ignore this one. And we'll go to the cyan and the blue. So the blue is helping me with the darker blues, and the cyan I can use to adjust the lighter parts of the blue, so the highlights in the jacket. And then the magenta makes quite a strong effect on the pants. So you can see right there I've got control of just the pants in this particular image. So like I say, with these six sliders, you basically have very tight control over separate areas of tone in your black and white conversion. So you can play around with these until you get something that you find pleasing. So I'm just going to now go to levels. And I'm just going to add a little bit of highlights here. Just bring out the whites a bit more. So you can see you can see how it's all panning out. I've still got separation between the different areas of tone on the jacket. There we go. The top of the legs, I've got good definition tone there. So on the back of the hands, it's a little light. So what I'm going to do is go to my levels. I'm going to take a brush. Make sure it's black, not white. And then I can simply brush back the detail into that area. And on her top, just bringing the detail back in. You can see it coming. And in a few other places. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the image layer 
and I'm choosing my burn brush and I'm just going to darken some areas that I want to be a little bit more black. So I'm giving him black shoes for this exercise. There we go. And I'm going to do the same on the female model. So I'll just blacken those shoes. And now I think I'm going to make her leather jacket a bit more black. Which is a bigger brush. So I'm just burning that darkness on the top of the jacket. And just to keep that pole in the foreground, I'm just going to darken that as well. There we go. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is staying on the same layer. I've changed to my dodge tool. I'm just going to pull out a couple of highlights here and there and uh, brighten the highlights on the jacket, just brush, brushing lightly over them. I've got the brush selected to highlight. Pick out a few bits of the hair. And for now, I think that's done. Obviously, you can play with this as much or as little as you wish to get the finished effect that you, wa you want. But as you can see, you've now got complete control over your black and white conversions.